Welcome to the Tech Today podcast with your host, John Maeda. So there are a million things I would like to say about the present AI bubble that's persisted for over a year now. Um, let me see if I can make it kind of short and sweet. And then I want to talk about Microsoft Copilot. Uh, so I had an institutional investor say to me last week that, well, you know, companies are, the AI economy is here and many companies are re-architecting themselves from the ground up to be AI ready, to be prepared for the AI economy. So I think the first mistake that investors make, it, it, and this was a large, sophisticated institutional investor house that, that said this to me, um, but number one, as has always been the case, companies will pitch something if they believe it's going to goose their valuation. And given that all things AI uh, tend to be painted with a favorable brush, we have companies latching on to those two letters, AI, in an effort to goose their stock. The, the, the last time I saw a bubble of this nature, I mean, I guess EV bubble comes close, but the, the dot-com bubble of 99, 2000, where you had companies literally adding the period, the dot, <laughs> and then the com to their name in an effort to goose their stock price. AI, so... Let me take a step back. First, AI, broadly speaking, is not new. I'd say companies started uh, to do advanced analytics in the cloud in large part. Uh, even if they didn't have a formal cloud offering, they were working on skunk work projects. Early 2000s, you started to hear about AI. More generally speaking, 2011, 2012, 2013, that was around sort of the the big data wave, if you remember that. And predictive analytics was really the thing that people were talking about. And when you talk about AI or advanced automation at, at, the, at the fundamental core, what you're talking about is a predictive analytic. Whether it is a machine learning kernel working to uh, predict customer churn. Uh, you know, that that ML model at its core is a predictive analytic. Uh, similarly, natural language processing, NLP, is a predictive analytic. You know, the, 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 the model is trying to predict the, the next word in a, in a sentence or a phrase. Um, you know, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, um, AWS, they've run ML slash predictive analytics, uh, image recognition, a whole host of advanced automation slash AI models in the cloud for over a decade now. Investors regularly conflate all the various permutations of AI with each other. And I feel that it is, or more than feel, I believe that it is the generative AI, the gen AI component of artificial intelligence that has propelled uh, stock valuations to bubble ter ter territory over the past year, right? Whether it's NVIDIA, Microsoft, open AI and the private company side, Anthropic. I mean, there's a whole host of companies that have benefited from the AI valuation craze. So where are we? Uh, we're largely in the AI build, the gen AI build stage. As the large cloud companies build out their large language model and multimodal multi-modal model infrastructure and offer it through Azure, through AWS, through Google Cloud. Um, 
AWS is partnering with Anthropic for its LLMs offered through uh, AWS. Microsoft, of course, partners with OpenAI and offers OpenAI's LLMs through Azure. Uh, OpenAI, of course, also goes direct to market uh, via APIs. And I suspect that OpenAI will build out its cloud business over time. And, and, and compete directly with 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 Azure GCP and in AWS. Google also partners with Anthropic, but to a lesser degree than AWS does. And Google, of course, also builds its own LLMs uh, with its own TPU tensor processing unit chips. It also uh, purchases chips from NVIDIA, as most everybody does in this space. From my standpoint, there are certainly two, and you'd add Google to that list as well, three companies that are creating real intellectual property as it relates to Gen AI. NVIDIA with its chips, OpenAI building its, its LLMs with NVIDIA's chips, and Google building its LLMs at scale. Um, you could say, you know, if you want to throw Meta in there as well with its Llama effort, fine. Um, you know, it's a uh, open source model uh, that, that Meta offers. Microsoft, to my thinking, is largely along for the ride. The IP that it embeds in Azure is, of course, OpenAI's IP. Um, I don't remember forgetting off of the top of my head, but I know I came across a piece maybe about a month ago where it had sort of leaked that Microsoft's, you know, Azure's, presumably engineers, developers feel a bit like they are tech support for open AI, which is not a good place to be if you're a tech company. You want to be on the bleeding edge. You know, the, 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 the cool tech company is the tech company doing the bleeding edge work. And those are the companies that get the best engineers, the best developers, the best architects, so on and so forth. And it is not a good thing for Microsoft if Azure folks feel that they are tech support for OpenAI, but it makes perfect sense because it is OpenAI that is developing the latest and greatest LLMs in multimodal models, not Microsoft. So, but if you listen to a Microsoft earnings call, you would think that the company has changed the world already. Everybody's using Gen AI. It's sort of how they position things. Only I feel that Microsoft is conflating all things AI and positioning it as sort of Gen AI. So some of the numbers that they call out are, uh, you know, ML users in Azure, and they sort of position it as Gen AI usage, right? So if, if, if for me, the litmus test, if I'm an analyst, if I'm a, an equity owner in Microsoft and the company is heavily touting Gen AI in its earnings calls, I then want the company to break out in an SEC filing, in an 8K, in its Q, in its 10K, Breakout Gen AI specific revenue. Break that out. Gen AI specific revenue. Not that you've lifted prices on Azure and then you get on the earnings call and you spin those price increases as, oh, people are adopting Gen AI. They're excited. They're fired up about it. It's changing organizations. It's taking the world over. No, it's a price increase that you put through most every year 
and 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 now in in your positioning it as such that it's uh, specific to Gen AI uptake when when it's not. So it's that dishonesty that pisses me off. That frankly, every public company is 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 guilty of, and that's been the case since I started following public companies back in 03. So let's look at Microsoft Copilot. All right, so there's Copilot on the Google Play Store. So 10 million plus downloads. Okay, those are downloads. How many people are actually paying for Copilot features and functionality of the 10 million downloads? How many people are actually using Copilot as part of their day-to-day -day workflow? So this is Copilot as a standalone. How many people are actually coming to the Google Play Store because they want to use Copilot, right? So 10 million, 10 million downloads, 10 million plus downloads. We don't have much color beyond that as to how many of those people are actually using it day to day. And we scroll down to ratings on the phone. 4.6 stars out of five, 246,000 reviews. This sort of the most recent ones. Let's look at all of them. The app didn't work. The app simply didn't work once I logged in with my email account. When I logged out, it would only answer the first question and said it was having trouble reconnecting to my account. My bandwidth and throughput were not the problem. The app just as operating glitches as, as, as of May 19th of 2024. I'll just go back to using the web version. Honestly, there's absolutely no additional benefit to using the app. It's just a way for Microsoft to gather data. I agree with that. Apps are largely a, a metadata gathering uh, device. And this gentleman is deleting it. JM, not me. This is so much better than Gemini or any other assistant out there right now. Really. It finds valid sources most of the time. So the info is more reliable. It also has very sensible boundaries on what topics it will explore with you. It's a fantastic professional tool. It would be great, however, to see plugins for more targeted efficiency. For example, a plugin that transforms Copilot into a professional tool. Note, I am a paid subscriber. Gosh, mine, the restrictions on the way the AI, AI can answer can be very frustrating. I agree with that, and that holds true for all these models, frankly, Gemini, uh, GPT, and I haven't played with Copilot. Uh, the sort of restrictions on the way the AI can answer can be very frustrating, especially when there's absolutely no good reason, like the time I asked a stir-fry sausage and it had to... Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I, I, I've got to tell you, when, when it comes to how people engage with these Gen AI services, whether it be Copilot, GPT, or Gemini, it feels like a feature. Right, it, it it's a, it's an enhancement to, and of course now in the Gemini case they've embedded it in search, uh, in Google search, but it very much feels like a feature, a productivity feature. Certainly not something that's life changing at this point, and you can see some of my other videos where I give examples of uh, working with. Google Gemini to produce spreadsheets from images and to summarize articles and things of that nature. And there's a thousand other videos on YouTube where people are doing the same. Um, all right. So two stars, five stars, three stars, five stars, four stars, two stars, one star. How many people 
how many of these people are paid users? That is the question. So that's that's what I would love to see from Microsoft. I was going to tab over. I'll just do it. It's co-pilot on the App Store. I'm frankly getting bored talking about Copilot, and you're probably getting bored listening to me. But if Microsoft was serious about Gen AI and how it is kicking ass and changing the world, it would break out Gen AI revenues in the 8K each and every quarter. But you know what? Microsoft doesn't even break out Azure revenues. Right, the only company that breaks out specifically its cloud revs is AWS, is uh, Amazon. It breaks out AWS explicitly in its in its filings. But Microsoft won't even call out Azure. Therefore, why would it ever call out Gen AI revs in an SEC filing, in a GAP filing? It won't. It's a hell of a lot easier to just spin the story to the point where you have obviously not only the, the, the sell side, but you've got the buy side drinking the Kool-Aid on this shit. And it is shit. Pardon my French. And no, I'm not a fan of Satya Nadella. He's a carnival barker. That's all for now. See you next time.